I purposely selected 7 p.m. so that I can watch your live later on. Okay, I also want like a white top so that it's like more brighter-ish. Hi, hi Sean and Zoe. Thanks for joining me. So yeah, I just prepped my skin. I hope that okay, I'll just wait for a while and see if there's more people joining. So I'll prep my skin with my usual Bobby Brown vitamin uh, face base. So it's really good. I already finished. Yeah, so this is a new bottle for work. And then I prep my lip with a Laneige uh, lip mask. And under eye, I use like the Bobby Brown under eye cream. So before everyone come in, I'll just share with you guys what I did and also I have a new Instagram account that I share educational information about makeup. So if you're interested, you can go over to Suburbs Beauty. Today I decided to do this live because I was sharing that I won't be able to do the RM makeup for phase one, right? And some of my bro is actually thinking to do their RM at home or they will just do RM on their own and then maybe their bank will be next year. So I decided that if you're doing a simple RM on your own and you still want to look like brighter-ish, you will be able to recreate the makeup yourself by learning how to do it. I think the trick to bridal makeup is more of the color choices. I think 7 p.m. is a bit early. Usually, now live is like 8, 9, right? So, yeah, but it's okay. I'll post on the live later. Yeah. Okay. I think I can start and then if they want to watch, they can watch the playback. So now I see I really did moisturizer and then I think for a uh, brighter makeup, skin based texture is very important. So you want to moist well moisturize your skin. So for bright, I usually recommend them to do the sheet mask or just a uh, hydrating mask one week before their actual day. You can do it every night. So not the whitening one, just the hydrating one. So the first step I'm going to do after moisturizing and you can put some block. Then I'll put this CC cream. It's just to neutralize the skin color. So if your skin color like me is a little bit dull or yellowish kind, you can use this kind with a little bit of slight tint in pink. Oh yeah, today I'll be using Roseanne's brushes too. So I'm going to use um, the base brush to apply the color correcting cream. So what the pink base do, it actually lighten up your skin. And you know the trick for brights, they will look very fair and glowy during their actual day, right? Or like for pre-wedding shoot or an event, sometimes I like to use this step. So prepping is very important, creating the canvas for your skin. I'll show you half of the face first, like how it looks. So I use the base brush in a circular motion and swiping motion on the thin area. I'm using very little of the product, can you see? So I squeeze one palm and I'm using very little. This can use for the whole face really. Also the circuit breaker, I'm wearing masks when we go out for grocery shopping and things like that, right? It's causing me to have like breakouts. So I'm still nursing them. Not sure if it's very obvious, but these side still have a little bit of um decoloration. Let me lower the light, maybe it's better. So this side is slightly more balanced. They don't really have a coverage, but they kind of like even out your skin tone. So this side have a slightly more balanced and a little bit of radiant already. And the other side is still a little bit dull. So the primer actually helps. So get the pink color one. I like it a little bit more dewy also. So my direction for bridal looks are generally more radiant, youthful. I mix the technique of like Korean makeup and a natural makeup look. So that's uh, usually my preference for my brides.
under eye skin uh, tend to be thinner so you want to go a little bit light handed under the eyes using like a light swiping motion and the, I use up everything loaded in the brush and disperse using brush and sponges actually help you to disperse the product in a thinner layer So it depends on what finishes you want to achieve then you can choose the tools or the technique you use so i usually bring it down to my neck a little thin layer so this is the first step usually is a color correcting then i'll go in with a, a layer of foundation very thin layer and also if you have enlarged pores or things like that around the nose I recommend that you add a little bit of primer at this stage. So I'm using just Urban Decay one. It's a bit silicone. -y. You can actually use any primer that you like. So I'll put a little in my hand in the rolling motion to warm the product out a little bit and use a circular motion to fill up the pores. So around here, we wave to everyone first. It's so hard to manage everything. Okay, so a circular motion to fill in the pores like this in the balance. I'll just uh, fill in a little, very, very slight. So, if you have oily T zone and things like that, you can actually get the um, oil controlling primer at the T zone. Let me hi thanks everyone for coming in so the next step after the primer the color correcting i'm going to use a foundation so this is from Hera. i'm using the brush and dabbing in like this and then tapping in onto my skin so now that i mentioned i have a little bit of breakout on this area right so i'll use a dabbing motion on my areas that is most affected like this area that's breaking out lightly and the rest I will just like slightly just bring through like this. I want my foundation to be really thin as well. It's more on like to even up my skin tone mainly. It's not to really um, cover all the pigments. I think um, depending on how you apply and usually from what I know some of the mineral ones might but uh, usually it's how you remove your product if you remove it well it's okay and if you are really afraid of like cc cream or anything mineral, mineral clogging your pores i know a method is to use a swiping motion to push it out because um the way our pores are open if you use a rolling method you will fill your pores with the products so if you push it outwards it's actually sitting on top of your skin so if you are worried, you can use the pushing method, keep pushing upwards. But if you want to fill in your pores, we have to use the circular motion, right? So for that, you have to remove your makeup properly. And double cleanse means uh, you can use, after you remove your makeup, you still use facial wash to wash your skin twice. So we'll bring over my lid. Today is a very simple one because it's like a personal makeup that you do for yourself for your ROM day if you don't have a makeup artist. So I'm trying to keep it very simple and very fast. If not, I think your fiance will be asking you, are you ready? Can we go now? I like to spend most of my time on the base actually because I feel that it's a if you have a very good canvas, it's always nice. Let me see the mirror. I think we are almost done. So after this, I will actually um, go in with concealer. Concealer I'm using. Uh, actually, I can use this too. Even uh, the Slim Smudger brush, I feel that it's a very good as a detail brush. This kind of like small synthetic brush. They're actually very good as a... Um, concealer brush for very small detail so concealer I'm using can make so the darker color in the center will use to color dark pigment like pimple scar or dark eye circles you can use that 
and then the lighter one, pink, and the neutral one, like I mentioned before, you can use on like a normal uh, under eye, the eye circles and things like that. So this is the warm tone. Let me show you guys. Like there's this pimple here. So I'm gonna like cover this. You can see. Just use a very very tiny bit of the concealer and a small brush. Today is an impromptu session because I just thought about it this afternoon after I do the post. And then I will fill up all my scarring and pimple and breakouts. Before circuit breaker, my skin is so good. Like when entering circuit breaker, like I finally have clearer skin, but now it's like this again. It's okay, we will get there again. It's a lot worse like last week, that's why I avoided doing too much life because I have to put a lot of makeup on it. Yeah right, I've, I've been breaking up because of the, don't know, the mask or something so I'm trying to like avoid putting too much product. So after I put my concealer, I'll usually let it like uh, set for a while, I won't push it immediately so that it can cling on to the spot that where I need the most concealing. Next I'm going in with like a light pink nude sheet for under eye. I'm using my forefinger warm product out a bit somewhere below my art here before moving up towards the eye area I like to use it like this so I can get the most coverage around this area slightly move towards the darker area so if let then I change my finger for blending let's say if you have a very dark, dark eye circles you will use the concealer that I use to cover the pimple or the scarring as the base first before you're adding this so you see this face now is more brighter especially this part now do the same for the other eye so i like to use the dabbing motion for my under eye especially i feel it gives the best coverage um and also texture So a tip is when I do my own makeup, right, I usually like to tilt my head around to best fit the angle. Like let's say I feel like this, my whole finger hugs my face more. So I'll do this. And I like to usually quickly add it on my nose and the side of my nose. Like this and my lips. Okay, and maybe a bit on my eyes. Sometimes all these things really come very natural to me, so when I demo, I tend to like, just see how it goes. So after that, all my, uh, the, the concealer that I covered, I will dab. I will not push it, I will just dab. And then I will go back in with the neutral tone concealer the center one so it's your big day right it's supposed to be your wedding day your rom day so i will tend to spend a little bit more time i'll cover because the color just now we use is slightly um darker so i want to neutralize it a bit you can use a brush also if you like to I will focus around the side of my nose because um, it's a bit dark for me. I'm using this brush, it's a smooth blender brush. Because they are synthetic, you can use it powder or dry. So I kind of like to use it also on cream products. I'll just use to like blend the concealer. Hi hi, thanks for joining. Apply quite a bit of like concealer around this area where I have pigments. So 
I'm covering up the colors. Remember, for coverage, always use a dabbing motion. For texture, just a sheer wash of tone is a swiping motion. Okay, so now I'm done with the face. And if you are using a um, cream product, you can do it now. Let's say if I want to use a cream blush. This is from Chemic. And then um, I also like to apply lipstick at a very early stage because I kind of feel that usually when I do makeup, let's say the photographer came in and take a picture of my bride, usually without lipstick, they kind of look a bit more like sick and a bit tired. So I usually quickly just throw in a lip tint so that when the photographer come in and we, are, we have not yet finished the makeup look, right, she will still look quite finished already. So this is actually a cheek tin from um, Chemic, number 17. I kind of really like the color. So if you are attending an event or your own makeup, you want to make it look really natural and you have a bit of glow without looking a lot, you can always opt for cream stuff. But if you want an extra holding power, you can actually layer cream, then you stack on your blush. So for bridal makeup, right, I'd like to focus my blush slightly forward but also not too high. I want something like more elegant in a way, a little bit more fluffy. Unless it's client request like for a certain specific look, else uh, my go-to will be usually like what I demonstrate today in terms of colour and placement. So something like this is a very light wash of colour. So if you are doing a natural makeup, right, you can actually set this ready. But because I'm doing bridal, so I'm going to do extra stuff. So this one is a uh, Iman that passed me this from uh, Etude House. It's a Play 101 setting powder. I find it really interesting because you can twist to open and then there will be powder and it's like portable. So I think it's really good for touch up. And then you can lock it and then you can keep it back in your... and they have this thing. You can keep it back. It's really interesting. It's the first time I see this because I haven't been to Etude House for a while. It's slightly a bit pinky, like what I used to set the, the primer, right? The one that we use. So pink actually brightened up the face. This is so cool, right? This is super good for touch out, I feel. So it's easy to bring around. So I like to use a bit of the pink undertone um, loose powder. Let me show you guys because I test just now and it's really cute. Let me see if it's coming out. Open. Okay. I don't know if you can see or not. This is like I test really can see, but I'm not sure if camera can see. You can't see, I'm not gonna like waste too much time. Okay. Can you see? Okay, never mind. I think you can already see. So it's good for touch up. Just focusing on under eye because I put concealer, so under eye tend to crease a bit more, right? Yeah, Why? It's detail house. The Korean makeup is actually good. I put on my T zone, and it's the first time I'm trying to. So I suddenly I realized this is so portable, you know. But I think for personal makeup, it's okay. If you are really scared because you scared this brush is dirty, right? I think you can lock this first. You can close it, and then you can just wash the brush as per normal, like a brush. I wait for the product to like really escape first. I think you can. I'm not sure. I need to explore. This is the first time using this. So just now I only powdered like my T-zone and around here. So my cheeks are not powdered yet. Usually I will add on contour and I'll add on like um, blush. The technique is to actually use very thin layer on each area. So this is the old palette that my friend bought me or I bought it, I don't remember. So for um, blush for bridal, right, I usually opt for something like this kind or pinkier tone actually, like soft pinky tone, like this maybe or this muted pinky tone. And there's one of my recent favorite that I realized that really look very bridal is this YSL one. It's a bit of sheen and it's really nice. Number nine. So I'm using this today. I decided to use this because it's still really nice. I load it on this blush brush and I, I usually like to use the mirror for like blending. Then I'll place it on top of the area where I already did 
the cream blush. So same, I'll focus on the center first, then I'll slightly blend it outwards like this. This one really depends on your place, your cheeks area for the placement. If you're not sure where, you can DM me, I can, I can advise according to your pictures. Okay, so this is around there and I'll blend it into a powder brush. For personal makeup, I usually do it a lot faster. Okay, so now... And for my own makeup, usually sometimes I will do my brows last because I already know the shape. So for easy beginner who doesn't really know how to choose eyeshadow, brighter shadow I also tend to either go for pinky or nude. So these two are really a very good combination for me. This by um, Can Make is also like a cheaper version of the Jeep Stewart, right? So another brighter color that is really really nice is this Charlotte Tilbury color. Look at the colors! Oh my god, so cute, right? From your nude all the way to your pink but this has a warmer overall undertone so if you don't like warm then maybe this is not for you but I really like this also I'm going to go with um I really want to use the Charlotte Toby one but let's go with something affordable and easy which is this one so I'm going to use like um I'm going to straight away use this pink that is like the second dark color not really second like a medium 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 middle shade like it's more of a neutral not really neutral it's a bit pink i don't know how to call this but it's just not too dark and not too light so when i apply my own eyeshadow i usually save a bit more time by doing just two colors i have also um shared before regarding the eyeshadow placement usually i'll just place slightly higher than the crease if you have and if you are hooded when you look into the uh, mirror when you open your eyes you should be able to see the color just slightly usually i start in the middle left and right swiping motion Okay, I like to use another brush to just blend out. Have you guys like had dinner already? Okay, so this is what I will do. If you like brown, you can actually switch this to brown. I also like to mix it with I don't usually go for very pink look but for demonstration I just want something more obvious I'm mixing in with this brown I always feel uh, when you yay thanks when you are applying pink a lot of girls tell me they tend to feel their eyes look very puffy when they put pink but you should add in a little bit of brown like what I did in your crease area it actually will create more structure to the eyes and also like a slight contour feeling sometimes I contour I find that it's a bit too dark I'll use the just now the concealer or foundation brush to just run over like this <laughs> yeah, so it makes a bit of brown will be good. So let's say I do very pink on the upper eyes, I'll use a brown on the under eye. So I have a bit of balance to the color. And then a clear color, like the middle one comes in a shiny glittery color. I'm putting it in my inner corners. This. 
I'm also putting it in the center of my eye, dabbing motion for the extra blink. I think the only day where I can look extra blink is during wedding. Hi Roseanne! Yeah, Roseanne made all these brushes, I'm using them. But I'm using them um, not really in the same manner. I did use the blush and the powder at it is, but I used your smudging brush, the slim one, as a detail concealer brush. Can do detail concealing, it's really nice. And I really like these two. One for blending and one for packing on, and this is the foundation brush. That I used to do the primer and my foundation. So I'm done with the basic eyeshadow. Just by using two colors, the pink and the brown, so that it's not overpowering. And then brown here with the glittery in the inner corner. So this is it. And then we can go in with eyeliner. And usually what I like to do is I like to use the brown. This either one. I will do it a bit on my lash line. So it's like a soft smoke effect. I feel that this step really opened up my hooded eyes and create more depth in the makeup look. So I actually dab in two colors like this. And I'm using the round pencil brush. I think the size is really nice to fit at over here. I usually like to focus at the end in a rolling method and then push it up in front. Something like this. So I actually also use the eyeshadow to elongate my eyes a little. So this is with the dark color and this is without. So this, as compared, you can feel that this has a lot more depth to the um, look, right? The other eye. I like to tilt my head downwards so that I can get into the tight line like really close. Like this. Okay. Go like this. I think I can go in with a bit more nose contour. Because I don't know, I just like a nicer nose. Let me see. Um, I'm using back the color from Kenmei. I'm trying to use, just now I use this, I'm trying to use this a little bit more cool, darker. Just lightly around this area. Yeah, I want to finish everything in like less than one hour. Okay, I think it's good enough. And then for a quick makeup look, let me try eyebrows. I want to use this also, this color in the middle. And with this a slim shader brush. Just now I have used concealer, but I'm just going to just wipe it off from on my a tissue sheet and usually I use powder, it's fine. You can use your eyebrow powder or you can use your eyebrow pencil, it's totally up to you. For the brighter look, usually I like to keep my brows defined but soft. So powder is a good option or if you can use a pencil to mimic strokes, it's also a very ideal option. So like me, I usually like the gradient eyebrow, so I'm keeping my front really soft and focusing on the tail. I'm mixing in um, these two colors for my eyebrows. And if you are someone who have really dark eyebrows, you can uh, opt for an uh, eyebrow mascara. I'm also not wearing contact lens today because, I don't know, I just want to look a bit more natural. 
and you know on wedding day sometimes people will take photo of you and they will throw back maybe 20 years later and things like that so sometimes for me i always like to try different things so what if i choose a contact lens color let's say green or blue is my recent favorite or gray and then i don't like it on my pictures so i either go very natural like darker brown black or i'll just not wear contact lenses on important events hi karina so this is using eyeshadow and a small brush like this to create the eyebrows and for softer effect I usually like to use I clean off the eyeshadow brush using just a tissue to get rid of the colors and I can reuse them. This is usually how I reuse the brushes in one look so I don't really have to um you know wash so many brush. I want to use, actually I want to use the loose powder. Maybe I'll just use this. And I, I like to powder over my eyebrow so that it's really soft. I always have this issue with my, the end of my eyebrows always go missing. Okay. Let me go in later. Eyeliner. Okay, so this is the look so far. The skin is usually more dewy. And if you are someone with oily T-zone, you can powder your T-zone a bit more. I uh, usually try to keep the skin texture more dewy. I think I might need a little bit more blush also. I'm just someone who is very greedy. I always like to layer a lot of things. I'm going in with this color. I cannot just use one color, you know, guys. I always like to layer my colors. I find that, you know, it's just more dimension. Okay. I'm happy now. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of lip color. This is uh, Maybelline. Something like this. For brighter, I kind of like to use a bit more nude, pinky, blush shade. Or cherry shade is also very good. This is brand new and I intend to keep it for myself. So I'm using directly. Something like this. One layer dabbing. Yeah, this is really nice color. Don't know what is the number for this. Ninety, I think. I'm using it for the first time. I think it's really cute. I might um, add a bit of um, cherry color in the middle. I have maybe something like this, slightly darker. This is also very nice. This is also new. Something like this, slightly darker. And I feel this tone is a bit warmer and it suits me a bit more. So this you can see is like a more cool, like it's not, it's a bit more dusty. And this is with a slight coral. Mm, yeah, this is good. Eyeliner. Okay. Eyeliner, I don't have any drugstore one. I'm always using Kat Von D. So I'm using Kat Von D. And I'm using a brown color eyeliner for a softer look. So I, always, I usually buy Kat Von D eyeliner in brown and in black. So I'll just line my eyes. I recently did the eyeliner video also. So you're interested in how to do eyeliner, you can go over to that video. Link should be in my bio still. Something like this. It's raining. Is it raining over at you guys, like the area? Because it's really raining quite heavily in like Queenstown. So for a um, brighter look, usually I will not, I will, for myself I like to extend it a lot. But for my bright 
I usually will ask their preference and I will not do something too crazy. I try to keep it a bit more classy during, during the wedding day. Okay, and I'm going to add a bit of like glitters. This is from Wig Make and it's like my recent favorite. I think the girls already know at NM and Neon Mellow. I always add this on their model. So this is like a more Korean trend, it's optional. This has a reflex and it's a bit chunkier. It mixed with um thinner and thin and thick glitter. Can you see? So it's not very disco-y feeling. It's more like um like this. So only when the light shine on your eyes like this and then you can see it slightly and I tend to focus on this area. Yeah, I say I use this glitter a lot on the model and I really like it. So it's like this. Isn't it cute? This is really extra guys but I kind of like it for like the wedding day. Something like this. But if you are a more mad neutral person, you can don't do this step. It's fine. No, this is from uh, Wig Make. You can get from Guardian. And the color, this color is number number nine, I think. Should be number nine zero six or let me see. No six zero or what? Let me see. Uh, okay zero nine. <laughs> I don't know it's zero nine. Okay. Thank you. So this is a chunkier one which I really really like and it comes with like a doe food applicator like this so if you're not very familiar on how to apply you can actually stamp it on the eyes. Okay so this is actually the look. Hi Sean! Thank you girls for coming in. And I'm gonna cheat a little because supposedly I want to say I want to do a drugstore right but I really want to apply this from uh, Charlotte Therese uh, like what is this selling called? Contour powder, bronze and glow. So this is the anchor brush, like this. This one really personal. Some of you like it really obvious and some not, but I like it. Uh, I like it lah, cause my face is big. <laughs> I really like it. You know, uh, Mabel, something you didn't realize is usually we don't use bronzer or contour on your model because you don't really like the look. Every I have tested a few times because I like but every time if I apply contour powder on the models right you will tell me then you look a bit dark so I will like so I will like powder it away so I already know you don't really like um contour on the model skin like you like them natural You know something about this angled brush, it's really nice. Like when I apply, right, because it's from short to top like this, I find that it's very easy when I do this. Like it's a bit more brainless. I can place it and I can do it and it can blend quite well. So I really like it. Hi, hi. Thanks for joining. I'm showing how to do like a brighter look. So it's actually very simple and uh, lashes is optional. If you really like, you can apply. I recommend to use this uh, Michelle Bloom. Michelle Bloom or is it called Michelle Bloom? Or Mitch Bloom. Mitch Blooming. Uh, I use Mitch Blooming and I use another one. This DUP glue. Both are good. Thank you. Just now I demo how to do the eyes. Actually, I'm just using the can make and these these are like more suitable for bright this eye I will feel is quite trendy and it's also very suitable for brighter. Hi Jen. So just now I kept my fringe now it's like saying it already. It's my comb. So today the aim is to let brides who are affected during this period and have to do their RM at home. And then they have to do their own makeup. So they will Take some tips away from today's session. Yeah, yeah. I also wear this like lace white top that I have for very long already for this look today. 
Hi, thanks everyone. Yeah, I haven't tried Chemic powder, but I think Chemic is really good, you know, like for them, they are in drug, uh, drug store, right? But they are really good. I think Japanese is really like very good with their products. I always um use Japanese product like in when like I just started earlier, like you know, in poly days. Thank you. To today makeup like it's supposed to be natural but still has some color. I can like it seems to like tame my bangs. So if it's good if you have bangs, right? You get the roller and then you roll and by now you can just remove and not open up like this. But it's okay, you can always blow it later on. I think that's about it. I'm kind of lazy to demo lashes because I, I won't be able to show very well. But what I'm going to do is curl my lash. I'll bring it up like this. This is how I usually curl my lash. It's not as scary. You just need to make sure you tilt your head backwards and you don't have extra skin caught in this um, curly curler. And I bought this curler in Japan. I think you might be able to get it in Singapore now. It's this Japanese brand called Chassis or something, C-H-A-S-T-Y and they are made in a way that is less curvy let me see my other one the original one that I have like the normal color from Shiseido they are, their up is very C so this is actually made for more Asian eyes they have a bigger width also so when we apply our fake lashes this is actually long, bigger and I can fit the whole fake lash into this color without having to squeeze into the lash. So this is really good. So some of the features with um, like me have a flatter eye. I like to use this and some with the deeper set eye, I will use the usual color. This and then you can put mascara. So for brighter look, right, usually the lash, I like to focus that center being uh, the highest so the eyes will look rounder and cuter sweeter but it really depends on individual that's a general concept so yeah i also like to demo the hair for you guys i hope you all find this really helpful and useful now that's a start go mainly because of the base i did like a pink correcting primer so it will brighten up the skin a little. I use um, a pink shimmery loose setting powder. This what well, the light very bright from YouTube house. Cannot see. Yeah, this is very cute. Just now I'll show them like this, and then you can lock and unlock, then you can powder. Then close. And the blush, I use something like something like this color with a the shimmery with the sheen one for my SL this one so this very pink tone and the lips is from Maybelline these two color yeah. so that's all now I'm going to do hair if you are doing a very simple casual like oh I'm pre-wedding shoot and you need to look a bit more brighterish um I recommend that you get this kind of like pearl hair clips uh, these should be either from like Louvisa or online and also if you have a bit more time to spare you can actually go on like online stores to get like some clips for your hair or like some small pieces like I like the small dainty pieces recent trend is more on the white color with gold aesthetic and then like very small on the hair style so for me, the brighter hair, you can opt for like let down like this. Or very simple one method is to, I like to do is like find your parting. I'll probably do a side parting like this. Really in dye my hair, but yeah. And then I'll do like a, you know, for brides who always tell me like they're afraid their face look very big, right? You won't look very big even if you tie your hair. It's just to remember you have to leave a bit of fringe and hair around here, be in front of your ear. So something like... Let me see what works in the mirror, which side will look better. Probably if for my own 
I think now my bangs grew up quite long already. I'll probably not be able to do that side that I usually do. I'll probably just do like a pin over here. I don't re I really I don't really like to keep both sides in front. Usually for photo I recommend that the bride keep only one side in front so that they don't look too heavy. So let's find something easier to clip on. I usually if this is too big, right? I'll fold. Because they have a bendable metal. So I usually do this and then I can pin it. And from far it looks like smaller. So if I'm going to like the summarization on my own small family of 10, I still want to look quite bridal-ish, this is what I would do. So something like this. Can you see? And I'll pin like the one that is moving. Or you can always get like the pearly hair bands, hair clips. Use a hair clip probably easier. I think I'm done. Today is really impromptu. Okay, I'll save the life. Like this is probably tighter, it's easier. Because I usually use those from my bride, but for yourself maybe you can use this kind. Thank you. I feel like it's, I don't know whether a life will be all over the place because it's so impromptu. Okay, I'll put two like this. I think this is a simple one if you prefer let down. And actually, I feel for bright, right? I don't know why. I feel hair up usually also very bridal ish, like bun or low pony. So, another trick that I really like, like if you want to look like more effort, more made up, right? What I will do is I'll keep the fringe in front like this. I'll tie it into like a low ponytail. Like this. And then I'll curl like... Remember to cover like your ears a little bit. That's the trick. And then like... Hairspray. I'll tuck some... Not a lot, just some here, like this. And I can open up my fringe a bit, not too heavy. I feel heavy fringe tend to look a bit more cute. For wedding day, I like to look a bit more womanly, feminine. So I probably might curl this part a little and this. And then like this. And So this is also quite nice and if you're interested in bun, you can always make it into a bun like this. So it's really simple, I'll just do the very normal bun which I tie into a ponytail and then I twist it around. Can you see? I twist it around and secure with pin. So this is also very easy if you are a bun person. So this is like simple DIY. So I'm trying to use a simple step and not so complicated. But yeah, this is probably the look. Okay, I think that's all. I hope you guys find it really helpful. Fresh color look nice too. Oh my god, I miss doing bright. So fun. <laughs> okay, that's all. Thanks, guys. Let me just play around. I actually really like braids as well. I'm <laughs> just like starting to do all the hair stuff here. Hi, Moan. I'm finishing already, actually. Oh my god. My rubber band broke. And then. If you can get baby breath, I think you can add some baby breath. I always like to use baby breath, it's really good. 
it's okay I'm trying to keep it simple and not do too much no this is this episode is for you know brides who are doing ROM like virtually or going to the the solemnization place for ROM and because makeup artists we cannot work yet so some of the brides have to do their own makeup to to go for their ROM so I'm trying to like share some tips to how to create like bridal look so for them to be able to do their ROM sign their papers looking still like bridal-ish you know okay I kind of like want to add more pink I'm beauty I like this pink here Oh my god, I need to stop. I'm those who always tend to act a lot on myself, but I think it looks nice on photo especially. But on my bright side, probably not. Depends on your interest and what you like. Okay, it's all for myself. Okay, a bit, a bit, a bit more. Okay, I'm almost ending. I left with 10 minutes, so this is how. Yeah. You like this look, Belle? I think this is a look that your NM girl always do. Uh, wear. You know, because I have very strong lighting now in front of me. Uh, it's okay. We have so much to spare and we are not going anywhere. Like, you know. Yeah, I use glitter on my eyes as well. I think for long-lasting blush, I always have to add a bit more. More is more. Less is more. I feel okay, gold thin on the foundation, but color wise, you just have to look in the mirror and look at your phone. Lip color today, I'm using Maybelline. Someone gave me, so I have them in my bag, and I thought like it's really nice for a brighter look. Very cute, right? It's actually, you know, my lips are so sensitive to dry lipstick, and these are surprisingly really good. It's Maybelline Super Stay Mac Ink. This is 175 and this is um, number. I mixed two. This is number, just know what I say. Number, 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 number. 90. So I, I use this first and I use this. So this is a big color in the middle and the rest is this. Wow. I think, although I'm not a very, very pink person, but this look is really nice. But usually I opt for coral, right? More than pink or brown. But yeah, if it's a wedding day and all I shoot like the family shoot I did with my the confetti picture with my whole family, I did something like this because I think it's like radiant, neutral. Okay, we are done. So this is something probably I'll do. I probably have to trim my fringe already because it's getting really long. But I'll go for a really softer look. That's all. This is why like if you are not a bangs person, on wedding day I will, I will not recommend my bride to keep bangs because I feel bangs is too heavy, it can look very, you can only go for one direction which is cute. Like with the bangs you always look cute. I feel that it's, I, with the bangs I kind of look more bright, bright smith right, than a bride because it's quite cute. And then if you are more elegant and more sophisticated, I feel that it will, it's a more ideal look for like brides. I feel that maybe the wedding day kind of symbolizes your, you know, you entering the next phase and then no longer a little girl, something like this. So, yeah. Okay, my hair is in a mess. I really need to go to the salon soon. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. So today makeup, I use all from Lourdes Boom Kit. I think they always have promotion now. I'm not sure they still have or not because I bought it at 20% off. I always want to try since it's like local artist, so I decide to support. I always like to support artist brand. That's why I bought like my brushes that I use. Uh, I bought initially last time. I spent a lot of money buying real techniques because they are also from professional makeup artists. And I buy like almost their whole range. And then I I like Wing Goss um makeup brush also because it's also a professional artist. So I'm always buying, I like to support professional artist makeup brushes and the rest are like more Japanese um, craft brush and Mulan also a supporter with um, Wingos brushes so we really like those like, Japanese handcraft brushes and I think she also likes our 13 brushes which is so local brand 
So yep, that's all for today. Thanks everyone for joining. I'll post this on the IGTV live. I hope you find it really helpful. This is the look. Bye guys. Enjoy your dinner. I hope I didn't disturb you guys. And later 9pm, um, Neon Mellow is going live uh, with Audrey. And I w I'm always chit-chatting inside their live. Um, they will showcase a lot of cute clothes. So see you guys there at 9. Bye bye everyone. You know, I always dread doing live because I feel so nervous. But when, when the live starts, right, I don't want to like off it because I enjoy talking to everybody. I'll try to do live again next time. Bye bye. So I have braided my hair and did my makeup, added a pearl pin. Uh, and I think a bun will look nice too. Something like this. But anyways, if you are looking for uh, inspiration or step-by-step -step on how to do your wedding makeup for yourself during this phase one period where bridal services are not allowed, you can now go to my IGTV. Supposedly, I uploaded the live just now uh, into the IGTV and you can watch how I actually do step-by-step -step on recreating this look that is super suitable for weddings. And also to this look, I'm using makeup brushes from Roseanne by um, Bloom Kit by Roseanne and yeah it's really simple and if you don't have a nice set of brushes and you really want to find them you can go over to her page and support local so yeah I also added glitter on my eyes I really love it all the products I already mentioned in the video so do check it out <laughs>